Welcome to another episode of Life is Dataful. I'm Dan Peltier, a writer on the global content strategy team here at Publis Sapient, and I'll be your host. It's no exaggeration that the global travel industry is holding out all hope on the summer 2021 summer travel season for their recovery. And after more than a year of COVID-19 lockdowns and restrictions, many brands are just ready to welcome travelers back to their properties or aircraft cabins for safe and fun experiences. Now, the United States is one of the global leaders in vaccinations, with nearly 110 million people, or about a third of the population, having received at least one dose as of April 7th, and more than 64 million people, or about 20% of the population, are now considered fully vaccinated. And that's likely a big factor in why the Transportation Security Administration has been screening more than a million passengers per day since March 11th. And screenings are now at their highest level since before the pandemic in March 2020. A recent survey from Payments.com asked more than 21,000 U.S. consumers about how they'd like to re-engage with certain leisure activities as the pandemic progresses and nears its end. What's interesting is that while travel within the U.S. garnered the highest percentage of responses for want to do more of and want to do more if vaccine is available, a smaller percentage said they wanted the vaccine to be available to them in order to travel. This means that many people are simply just eager to travel, provided that they take the necessary safety precautions, especially after a year of government officials telling people to continuously avoid all non-essential travel. Still, that data doesn't tell us how people want to travel, be it on planes, cruises, or in cars. Data from Adara offers a glimpse of what travelers are planning for this summer from countries like US and across Europe. It's notable that at the end of March, more than 90 days from the departure was the most popular flight booking window for US travelers. Compare that to only zero to 15 days being the most popular booking window for the EMEA region. So the main takeaway is that many US travelers are planning and already booking summer travel, while Europeans are mostly holding back for right now. This also tells us that travelers are heeding their government's advice. President Biden told Americans in early March that he felt it would be possible to travel and have 4th of July celebrations with family and friends. And on April 2nd, the Center for Disease Control and Prevention said fully vaccinated people can travel at, quote, low risk to themselves. Now compare that to a place like the UK where government and public health officials have said that they're quote, hopeful that international travel could resume as early as May 17th. The UK has also implemented a traffic light system where travelers who visit a country on a green list, for example, wouldn't be required to quarantine upon their return. And Australia and New Zealand have also announced a quarantine free travel bubble between both countries that's set to begin in April. Now there's still plenty of reason to be optimistic with extremely high efficacy rates and some studies finding that vaccines offer protection for at least six months, travelers can feel safe. But the issue that still hasn't been entirely solved is how do you prove that you've been vaccinated? Is it the travel industry's responsibility to develop this technology or is it governments? A lot of complexities like privacy laws and regulations are involved in answering that. But what we have seen so far are some countries like the US, across the EU and Israel announcing or launching these passports. An airline trade group, International Air Transport Association has launched its own vaccine passport for its member airlines to adopt. Now these digital passports would verify vaccination and also include recent COVID test results if those are required for your destination. And this technology could also be used for other public health initiatives in the future like travel requirements, entering sports stadiums, or even movie theaters. And albeit the US government is just one example has said it doesn't plan to federally mandate vaccine passports, which will likely require a fragmented and confusing reality for travelers as states and private sector will likely have to decide on their own what they wanna use. But in order for vaccine passports to work, they need to be easy to use and provide real time relevant destination specific information for travelers to ensure they're aware of entry requirements before a trip and can prepare accordingly. And at least in the US, nearly two in three respondents to a recent JD Power survey feel that digital vaccine passports are a good idea. Besides, isn't it also time for regular passports to go digital anyway? Now, we can count on a successful summer travel season for travelers and brands likely hinging on five things vaccinations, case numbers, 
current and possibly future virus variants, the deployment of vaccine passports, and of course, the economy. While most indicators point to a travel rebound this summer, setbacks with any one of these five things, and particularly with vaccinations and cases, could quickly derail and lead to a snowball of vaccinations or prevent bookings altogether. To stay agile and ready, travel brands should be doing four things to prepare for a different and hopefully better summer. Number one, invest in mobile. It's clear that travelers want contactless options, and if your brand doesn't have an app or offer contactless check-in or boarding options, you're quickly losing relevance. This is also a great way to gather the right data about your travelers, learn their preferences, and understand how to better serve them as they start traveling again. Two, this is a great time to re-engage your loyalty members and bring more travelers into the fold. Building that trust and relationship now during challenging times will help you win travelers over for the long haul. Number three, create more ancillary revenue streams so your business isn't so reliant on one area. And when travelers do come back, they'll be ready to offer you so much more than they were probably expecting. For example, invest in e-commerce platforms and capabilities that allow you to sell things like tours and attractions or recommend local restaurants for dinner and then make it easy for travelers to make a reservation all while your business is earning commission. And lastly, be honest and transparent. Let travelers know that while you're doing everything you possibly can to keep them safe, their experience probably will be very different from the last time they stayed or traveled with you and be flexible with your booking and cancellation policies. Even with vaccines rolling out across the world, travelers are still inundated with uncertainty each day and want some peace in mind when planning and booking a trip. For all of you watching, thanks again for tuning in to another episode of Life is Dataful. For more videos and other great content, be sure to head over to the How channel on the Publicis Sapient website. See you next time.